would last year drive me even more this year? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a different uh, feel coming into this season um, uh, than last year. Uh, but I feel like the goal is still the same and coming in, uh, you know, it's obviously exciting to come back and see all the guys. But, uh, you know, I think uh, everyone's got the same goal in mind right now. How tough will it be to recover? Um, very tough, you know, but it's tough to win one, so, you know, and for to win the first one, so to repeat, obviously, is going to be tough, but, if, you know, I believe you can do it once, why can't you do it again? JD, why do you think that it hasn't happened? I mean, knowing baseball the way you do, why do you think it keeps having repeated in 20 years? Because it's so hard to do. Um, I mean, if you just look at everything that has to go right, Number one is starting with health. It's keeping, you know, your 25 guys healthy for an entire season. That's that's a World Series win right there in itself. So, you know, to be able to do to keep that, and then once you get into the playoffs, it's a different animal. You know, the timing's got to be right. Everyone's got to be clicking on the right cylinders. You know, you need those big hits. You go back to our World Series reign when, and you see the same thing. You see all these clutch timeliness hits and things that kind of work out. Baseball's a baseball's a weird game, you know. You can do everything right and ball bounce one way and you lose, so it's, it's not easy. J.D., obviously, you a great postseason here in Boston, but you're a noted perfectionist. When you look back on last year, what, what can be better for you? Personally? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think it's just... You know, me personally, I think uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I like to maintain my body a little bit better, um, stay more on it than I used to, than I usually am. Um, I think um, last year I kind of, you know, I wouldn't say slipped up, but took it for granted a little bit. Where I think this year I gotta stay more on top of it. Can you talk about? Sorry, John. And talk about um, Mookie Betts. Yeah, that's MVP season. Um, you know, phenomenal season, both offensively and defensively. Uh, he did a lot of things to help us win every day. And, you know, there's a reason that, that he, he won the MVP this year. Or last year, sorry. Can you talk about the relationship you two developed? seemed from afar that you guys kind of pushed through. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it was one of those things where when I first came into spring training, you know, um, I remember Alex kind of, like, guiding me towards Mookie, telling me, like, hey, this is your guy. Like, I want you to, like, you know, take care of him. Take, you know, talk to him, this and that. And, you know, to his credit, um, Mookie just kind of bought in and kind of just you know we kind of both like grew with each other um you know he's a smart kid and he learns quickly and he's able to learn a lot of things very quickly and he's a lot like me in the sense that he's a perfectionist and he loves to look he's not the kind of guy that likes to be good at something he likes to be great at everything and it's, you know it reminds me of myself that's why i always tell him i see myself in you kind of because it's we both want to be, you know, we want to have the perfect swing and, you know, the perfect plan and going up there and executing it perfectly. Can you talk about your uh, role in the clubhouse? Alex was just out here talking about it. Players have talked about it. I think guys that didn't know you, the biggest surprise was how much you wanted to really have an influence on this team, both on and off. Um, yeah, um, you know, I mean, I think the road that I took, um, you know, it helped me grow into the person I am today um, you know in Detroit being alongside a lot of veteran guys seeing how they lead then kind of going to um, Arizona and you know them there Goldie really kind of just making me speak it kind of gave me the confidence to start speaking up and you know like, like you know guys say like I like to study baseball and I love to be a perfectionist about it and I love to share information and you know coming here it was just like a lot of young talent that wanted information so it was almost rewarding to kind of just sit here and just give them you know whatever I had 
that day or whatever piece of information I can give them. And you know, I kind of it's become one of those things where the guys kind of look at me towards it, and it's cool. It's different. You know, I've never been like never been this point in my career, so it's, it's definitely a different feel. Did you see yourself? A year ago, you weren't you weren't signed. Um, you went through a very uncertain and uh, kind of jumbled up off season. Now that you have some, you know. How different was this winter for you and just getting ready for spring training, knowing that you were here and that there wasn't all that uncertainty you dealt with a year ago? Um, definitely different. Um, you know, you definitely know where you're going to play versus last year is, well, you're going to go here, you're going to go there. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's a lot more, obviously, comforting and relaxing knowing where you're going to you know, spend your year, but I mean, it's tough out there right now with, with everything that's going on, but you know, it kind of is what it is right now. And, and when you see that uncertainty on the free agent market, how does that impact your potential opt-out at the end of this year? Um, I don't really think it does. You know, personally, um, you know, I listen to obviously Scott and, you know, their advice, and that's what they're really good at. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I know my value and I know what I bring to the table. And, you know, I really don't kind of look at that. I kind of judge me on me. Were uh, you upset or anything about higher numbers? No, I mean, I kind of laughed about it because everyone was kind of making a big deal about it. Like, uh, with, like, oh, you're going to, you have a chance to, to you know, to win and stuff like that. I was like, guys, there's no way that the analytic guys are gonna ever let that happen. All right, in order for a DH to win MVP, they're gonna have to walk on water. All right, that's that'll never happen. So I mean, everyone, you know, it became the talk in the clubhouse last year, and everyone's like, you know, the only way you're gonna win is if you win the triple crown or whatever. And I was like, 100 percent, it's the only chance. But so when it came out, I kind of just I expected it, you know. I laughed, you know, kind of laughed about it, but, you know, I got the, I know how my peers think of me, and I know how my peers thought, and, you know, the, the text messages that I got, and the congratulations I got, and I remember that year, I mean, last year I won the, the player's choice for the MVP of the season, and, I mean, that to me meant huge, just to be voted by my peers. JD, you talked about being a mentor and, and loving teaching aspect of the game. I know you have some years left to play, but do you see yourself as, as a coach or a manager someday? Um, I don't know. It's one of it's, it's a little different. It's a different uh, animal. Um, I think I'm not there yet mentally. I think I'm more worried about playing right now. I really haven't looked at that. But I mean, who knows? I mean, I don't I don't know. That's 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 I haven't even never even thought of that. Did you know when you look stuff. at uh, this team, when you were coming here, knowing it from afar, what was that like and then getting in here, playing in Boston, playing with this group of guys, what was that like for you? And did you have any preconceived notions before you got here? Yeah, I mean, anytime you come to a, a team that you're not familiar with or a team that you haven't been a part of, you know, this is a family. And you're coming in, this, you're walking intentionally into someone else's home, someone else's family, and you're trying to be welcomed and, you know, coming in. So there's always that you know, kind of hesitation and stuff like that. And But the guys here have been amazing since the moment I got here. Um, you know, Alex is really set the tone. Um, you know, the guys here really welcomed me in right away and made me feel like I was a part of the family right away. So, I mean, obviously this year it's a little bit more feeling. You feel more like you're a part of the fam coming in than, than last year. You're not, in, you know, invading or coming in and stepping on anyone's toes last year versus this year it's more welcoming. Do you feel like that your passion for the game never shuts down? It's a chicken and egg question. Are you so passionate because you're so good at it, or are you so good at it because you've always been so passionate? Um, I think personally, I'm good because I'm passionate about it. And I think um, I've you know if you look back in my history when I was in college and high school and little league and you know coming from the minors, I wasn't the best. I was never the best on my team, 
you know, never the best. But I think, you know, my old mentor used to tell me, Paul Casanova, who, rest in peace, you know, died last two years ago. You know, he used to tell me all the time when, when high school practice would end and college practice would end and I would go 7 o'clock at night and take my bat and take my homework and do my homework while I was hitting in the cage. And he used to tell me, Flacco, he goes, you keep working like this and you keep doing this. He goes, one day you're going to pass everyone. And, you know, those are words that, I, that I've always lived by and, you know, I've always believed that, you know, hard work is, is, is everything and is the key and, you know, hard work will always be talent in the long run. Do you remember the name of the kid who was better than you at Little League? Oh, my God. Everybody? All the Little League kids? <laughs> yeah, there was, I mean, you know, I always made the all-star team, but I wasn't the guy and the same thing in college and the same thing in, you know, high school. So, but I've always dedicated myself to those words and that's all what I always do. I just keep telling myself, keep working hard and... That's at the end of the day, that's all I can control. Jay, the players always talk about how Boston's different to school and whatever. Do you feel like you're a guy that thrives in that, at least you did last year? And when it comes time, if you have to make a decision or whatever to opt out, how much will that factor? How much will the Boston experience factor in your future? Um, you know, for me personally, based on the whole scrutiny question, you know, a lot of people coming in, you hear that. And I'm going to tell you right now, no one's harder on me than me. So the fact that fans, you know, they sit there and boo me, I'm booing myself when I'm walking in. You know, no one's more pissed at, than me, so I'm with them. I'm like, yeah, you should be mad. I'm mad. That's terrible. So to me, I feel like it's never really bothered me because, honestly, I'm so locked in and I'm so caught up in the process that I don't even worry about the outside noises and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, it's... I love Boston, I love the passion, and it kind of matches my personality. Um, fans almost feel like they're just as passionate as me. So, obviously I'd love to stay here, and, but, you know, that's really not what I'm worried about right now. Yeah, don't hit the ball to right field in the first month or two because it's cold and the wind's blowing straight in. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, for me, it's always been the same. I said it last year when you guys interviewed me and you guys asked me, oh, your swing place to right field, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to do the same thing I've always been doing and keep hitting the ball to right field. And, you know, that's kind of what I did and that's the approach I believe in and, you know, it's paid off for me. You made a decision to go to the White House? Yes. I'm going, yeah. You know, I believe it's an honor to go. That's our capital. That's our, you know, that's the White House. Not a lot of people ever get to go there. So I'm really excited about it. JD, the, the, uh, in the second half, particularly in August and part of September, um, the home runs dropped off a little bit. I know you're not up there trying to hit them. Mm -hmm. uh, but have you, as introspective as you are and as a student of hitting that you are, have you gone back and look at video to see like was something different or why you went through that stretch where you didn't hit a lot I mean there was numbers. yeah there was I'm not one to you know make excuses and you know say all that stuff but there was a time right around that time when you know my whole oblique was acting up and it was you know we were battling it in there with you know with the trainers and it was frustrating but I was still able to produce and they might have not have been as high as, you know, maybe they were, but, you know, I kind of look at it as, you know, average. You know, what's my average home run per month? And I like to break things down per day, per week, per month type thing. And, you know, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't anything, like, alarming or concerning that... I mean, you knew at the time the reason for it. Yeah, I mean, I remember talking to the trainers and stuff like that. I was like, dude, I can't. My oblique, for some reason, I don't know what I did to it. It got better in September, right before the like the last two weeks, right before the playoffs. Thank God, I started feeling a lot better, and you know, I was able to hold it my my load longer.